The Lord be with you. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Racine. We're glad you're with us. If you're a member of First uh, or here in the Racine area, we could use some help with the food pantry. We have enough food so far, but we've seen our attendance double since this pandemic has started and the numbers seem to keep going up. What we need are more people to help us prepare the boxes. It's, everything's very safe. We keep the people apart from one another. Everyone wears masks. We simply prepare the boxes and then slide them across the table to our guests so no one has to come in contact. If you can help, uh, that would be great. We could use people. It's Wednesdays from 4 to 7. You can work an early shift until 5.30 or 5.30 to 7. Uh, any help would be appreciated. This is a congregation dedicated to God's good news of salvation, which we understand to be liberation from all that makes us less than God knows us to be, and wholeness, all of us growing into the image of Christ that God calls us to be. So welcome to First Presbyterian. We hope that while you participate in these worship services or check out what we have available online through our webpage at firstpresracine.org, that you will experience God's liberation and wholeness in your life as well. Welcome. Praise by Angelo Getter. Today I will praise. I will praise the sun for showering its light on this darkened vessel. I will praise its shine. Praise the way it wraps my skin in ultra-violent ultimatums demanding to be seen. I will lift my hands in adoration of how something so bright could be so heavy. I will praise the ground that did not make feast of these bones, praise the casket that did not become a shelter for flesh, praise the bullets that called in sick to work, praise the trigger that went on vacation, praise the chalk that did not outline a body today. Praise the body for still being a body and not a headstone. Praise the body for being a body and not a police report. Praise the body for being a body and not a memory no one wants to forget. Praise the memories. Praise the laughs and smiles you thought had been evicted from your jawline. Praise the eyes for seeing and still believing for being blinded from faith but never losing their vision. Praise the visions. Praise the prophets who don't profit off of those visions. Praise the heart for housing this living room of emotions. Praise the trophy that is my last name. Praise the gift that is my name. Praise the name that is my name which no one can plagiarize or gentrify. Praise the praise, how the throat sounds like a choir. The harmony in your tongue lifts into a song of adoration. Praise yourself for being able to praise, for waking up when you had every reason not to.
Welcome. Please join me in the call to worship. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <clears throat> Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, for the things we have done that we regret, forgive us. For the things we have failed to do that we regret, forgive us. For all the times we have acted without love, forgive us. For all the times we have reacted without thought, forgive us. For all the times we have withdrawn care, forgive us. For all the times we have failed to forgive, forgive us. For hurtful words said and helpful words unsaid, for unfinished tasks and unfulfilled hopes, God of all time, forgive us and help us to lay down our burden of regret. <clears throat> The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Since God has made us the blessed community, the church, let us greet one another in whatever way we can with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you and also with you.
The scripture reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Our second reading for this day of worship comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The words of our Lord, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It is at last summer, and summer for many is a time of the year for rest and refreshment. But this raises the question, why do we need rest? And more specifically, why a religion-based rest, which we commonly call the Sabbath? One answer is that we need rest because being human is part of being in God's image, and God, we know, rested after creating. So God, who made all things, also took time to enjoy what God had made. So. If you and I plant gardens with vegetables, at some point we will want to take time to sit and enjoy what our gardens have produced. We also take a Sabbath rest every seven days because we are commanded to. Notice in Scripture there is no command to work, but there is a command to rest. This may seem counterintuitive. However, listening to conversations of people at work, it seems you and I often express our longing for weekends and holidays. We are looking forward to them, a chance to take a break from work. And yet, it is easy to get trapped in the habit of thinking that we never have quite enough. This can lead to anxiety, and to relieve this anxiety, we keep working. Americans in particular work more hours and let go or forego their holidays and breaks more than people of any other country. So resting makes us at least try to imagine that we have enough. We will not starve. Our worlds will not collapse into chaos if we stop toiling one day out of seven. Resting can stop at least temporarily our state of perpetually anxious toil. In our reading from Deuteronomy, we have another reason to rest, human kindness. Remember, the writer of Deuteronomy says, remember when you were slaves in Egypt and you had no rest. Remember what it was like, rest. And even more, give rest to those who serve you. We are to take care that our rest does not then mean more work for others. To rest in a holy sense is also to give rest to others. We rest because it is part of being human. It breaks up our anxious toil, our anxiety, and rest makes us humanize rather than commercialize others and ourselves. Once we acknowledge we need to rest, the question then becomes, how do we rest? And here Jesus tells us. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and then you will find rest for your souls. 
To find rest for our souls, we take on the yoke or the way of Jesus. And what is that? First, it is personal. We live in a world of policies and procedures and manuals of operation, all designed to keep human interactions impersonal. A manager is required to fire a worker, one she knows needs the job, to keep the medical insurance, to provide the expensive medication that is keeping the spouse alive. As the manager delivers the pink slip, she says, as if it would help, it's nothing personal. Jesus is all personal. Whether meeting the Samaritan woman at the well at midday or Zacchaeus at his home or the mother whose only child has died, Jesus is all personal. Seeing each one fully, listening carefully to discern what this person needs. The woman at the well already feels unbearable shame. She needs a way forward in life, not more judgment. Zacchaeus already feels the weight of disapproval from the religious establishment and the people. He needs a way back into community, not more rejection. Good policies are helpful and necessary, but they are not substitutes for actually seeing and trying to understand one another. Taking on the yoke or way of Jesus means first to be human to one another, to see one another as neighbors, and not to miss or misunderstand our neighbors because we are too busy memorizing and following sets of rules and manuals of operation. A second aspect of the yoke of Jesus follows upon the first, love. Sometimes what we call understanding is really just analysis. We learn the details so we can find a way to fix people as if they were simply problems to be solved. And once fixed or solved, our obligation to them ends and we can forget them and move on. Jesus loves. He does not see us merely as problems to solve or loose objects that need to be put back in place, or temporary interruptions he needs to address as quickly as possible so he can get on with more important work. Jesus loves. And that means giving us the faith and courage and confidence to begin to answer our own questions, face our own challenges. Rather than taking away what challenges us, Jesus inspirits our hearts, minds, souls, and strength to rise to the challenges and in so doing become more whole, more alive, better versions of ourselves. There is an irony in taking on Jesus' yoke of being personal and loving. It is harder, much harder than staying detached and hiding behind rules. And yet, when are we happier, more alive, more fully human than when we love? Still, the easy, detached, impersonal, quick fix way calls to us. And so we gather here or virtually here every Sabbath to find rest for our souls and to be reshaped into Jesus' way of love. Even if gathering during a pandemic means coming together virtually through the internet. So let us pass and receive the peace of Christ through our phones and computers and love and be loved as neighbors, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And let us linger with one another, talk, listen, laugh, cry, be present and personal, heart to heart, even if we can't yet meet face to face. And in the spirit of Christ and in communion with one another, let us have a good and much needed Sabbath rest. Peace be with you. Amen.
We've come to our time for offering, and we invite members and non-members, visitors alike, to help us as this church reach out to our community. Your tithes, your pledges, your offerings help us to care for those who need more care, especially during this pandemic. And so we ask you to be generous with your tithes and your offerings. Let us take this moment, turn our hearts to others, and offer our prayers of intercession. Holy God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. God, our Creator, you made all things in your wisdom, and in your love you save us. We pray for the whole creation, overthrow evil powers, right what is wrong, feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice so that all your people may freely enjoy the earth you have made and joyfully sing your praises. O oh God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people so that we may be reconciled with those we fear resent or threaten, and live together in your peace. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick or grieving, especially those we name now in silence. Mighty God, whose word we trust, whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our requests and further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the sun of peace to you, this day, this night, and forever. Amen.